I'm here today to talk about this study because to me the study was absolutely fascinating. I work with business, business to business sales organizations around the country. Um, I work primarily with technology, business services firms, but all the time I am consistently asked by every sales organization I go into this question. Can LinkedIn really increase sales? Now you guys are from the Bay Area where there's a lot of technology around, so you probably think that this is, you know, like common sense. But I'll tell you, I work around the country and over and over again I still have people asking this question. Can LinkedIn really increase sales success? And so I decided rather than just saying yes, which is the obvious answer to me and has been for a number of years, that the right thing to do was to actually take some time and study it. Now I know there's research that says yes, and, and, and Mike was just quoting some of this research, but I think what's important is to look inside the yes and to find out what's happening. Now what I did is I did take a look at 3,094 sellers. That's quite a few people who had a chance to give their input. Everybody was on LinkedIn, so I wasn't looking, are you using LinkedIn? What I was looking at is what they were doing when they were using LinkedIn and how it was impacting their overall success. Because I'm somebody who's focused on outcomes. What are people doing that results in sales success? Now the interesting thing of this survey, you'll probably be surprised with this next statistic that I'm gonna show you, but first I'm gonna tell you about the demographics. 25% um, salespeople, 21% inside salespeople, 25% sales managers, and the rest were a combination of consultants and entrepreneurs of various sorts. So that's who took it. Sales cycle was typically a B2B sales cycle, sometimes 30 days, mostly 60, 90, even up to 180. Not, I didn't have the people with the long, long-term sales cycles. That's just so you know who these people are. Okay, so of all these people, this is one statistic that jumped out at me. 55% had never, ever had an opportunity created via LinkedIn. These are the people that are saying, can LinkedIn really increase your sales success? This is 50, over 50% of the people that are asking this question. So this is why the question is popping up. Um, of that, the rest of the people, Here's what we had. We had 4.9% who we defined as top sellers. Before I give you a background into who these top sellers are, I'd just like to say that the rest of the people had created some opportunities via LinkedIn. They, they could attribute some opportunities. But what we found when we, when we went through and diced through all the data was that 4.9% of the people who took the survey were creating lots of opportunities via LinkedIn and we're having a great year in sales. And we needed to have the great year in sales there too, because you can create a lot of opportunities, but if it's not getting you towards your goal, it's sort of irrelevant. So 4.9%. And what we did then is we took a look at that 4.9% and we said, what are they doing? Of all these questions we asked regarding behavior, what are they doing when they're on LinkedIn? Because something's different about these people. Now what was fascinating to me, what was different, I mean there were so many things that were different that we really, really got into and we also had a lot of people that shared their actual stories with us. So that was fascinating to get inside the mindset, the mindset of these people in terms of what they were actually thinking. Because I honestly think that LinkedIn is a tool, it, it is not, is a tool that's an enabling technology that allows you to be successful. It is not the answer in and of itself. It's how it's being used that makes the difference. And so this is what was fun to get inside those people's head and to see what they were thinking. So let me share with you some information. I'm going to go through the four major categories we focused on just so you can see what the differences were and what the top sellers were doing. The number one use of LinkedIn very clearly was as a research tool. I'm sure that you know, that's a no-brainer to many of you. But within that data, in terms of what were people doing on LinkedIn when they were researching, were some interesting statistics and in comparing what the top sellers were doing versus the average sellers. For example, the question. How many of you research people before making a contact? 
Get online, research people before making a contact. How many of you do that? Research people before making a contact. Okay, you guys are gonna probably be astounded at this answer. Well, the top sellers, 86% of them, always researched people before making contact. Whereas the other people, only 27% did. Isn't that an amazing statistic? The people who raise their hand, every one of you are saying, this is an invaluable tool that I need to go on to research this person before I, I, I go out to them. Because you know that it's crucial that you find out this information. And yet there's a whole subset of people out there, the majority of the people out there aren't using LinkedIn to research contacts before going on. To identify contacts, to find out who to even contact within an account. How many of you are doing that? Yeah, see, most of you are doing it. You're going on. See, this is going to be, you're going to, you're all the top sellers. You're using this stuff. So you're going to feel good because you're doing the right thing. Identify contacts within an account. What we found is the top sellers, 76% of them, were using LinkedIn to find out who to contact. It was, a, it was their own prospecting toolkit. They were digging right in. They were looking up and finding out who, to, who was the right decision maker. They were using the advanced search functionality. They were doing tons of things on LinkedIn to find out where should I be spending my invaluable sales time because I value my sales time and I don't want to waste it calling on people who aren't worth my time. This is the mindset. I am focused. I know who my target market is. I am going after my target market, and I'm not wasting time because I'm a smart cookie, and that's what's important to me. However, only 20% of everybody else was using LinkedIn to identify contacts in a company. A huge data gap, huge, in terms of what the top sellers are doing versus the average sellers. Now, expanding account contacts. I'm working with this company. They're, they're, you know, they're my target company. I'm working with Sally and John. But are there other people in the account I should be contacting? And top sellers, if you take a look at their mindset, again, because we had a lot of people that talked about their mindset, they did not want to have one or two contacts within an account. Top sellers wanted lots of good contacts because they didn't want to have their success be based on one human being who could block them, keep decisions from moving forward, go to another company in the middle of a sale, and all sorts of things that happen. So top sellers were doing this a whole lot more. In fact, top sellers, 58% of them were using it LinkedIn to expand, expand their contacts within an account whereas only 11.8% of all others. So again, we see this mentality with top sellers about I want to ensure that I'm talking to the right people, I want to make sure that I have a lot of people involved, I don't want to have my success dependent on one or two decision makers within an account. And finally, the other thing that I thought was interesting was using LinkedIn to create targeted prospect lists, which you can do through the safe search functionality. You've got the, you can do a lot of them if you've got the paid version. 80% of our top sellers were using this functionality with their targeted prospect lists, whereas only 23% of all other sellers were targeting their prospects and creating that list, that saved search that they could work from. This is a huge difference. And so you say, well, why are some people missing the boat? Partly, and that's a question I was asking. It's like, this is such a radical difference. But what I see is so many companies that don't have a leader in their organization or somebody who's using LinkedIn. And until you see somebody who's doing it, you don't know what's possible. And that's what so many people are struggling with. They haven't seen how to leverage LinkedIn, which is kind of my mission to help people wake up and go, you guys, wake up. This is, there's an easier way to get business if you'd use this tool that's sitting right in front of you. And for many of you, it can be free, and then more if you want to have the additional capabilities. But let's take a look at some of the other areas that we researched as well, just because I want to give you a few more data points. Network growth and depth of network. This is who you're, content, who you're connected to and what you're doing with these connections. What we found. We asked a question, how many of you are connected to 50% or more of your customers, your clients? That was an interesting question. And if all of you would think of that right now, 
I bet you all could think of some clients that you should be connecting with that you aren't right now. But there's a lot of reason to be connected with your clients. The single smartest one is, you know, what if they move? What if they move and they could take you with to their next company, but you don't even know that because you're not connected to them. What we saw is our top sellers were very cognizant that it was critical to be connected with their customers, not only because you know, of movement, but also because they have access to their second level contacts, which was very important for having and expanding your presence within the account. So what we looked at, we saw 54% of our top sellers were connected to 50% or more of their customers, showing that there is room, even among the top sellers, for improvement, we can be connecting more compared to only 18% of everybody else. But seriously, take a, I mean, the easiest thing you can do right now is connect with more of your customers today. And I, by the way, I'd throw in one, one other thing too, connecting with people in your own company because they could be your second level connections too. Can't tell you, in some of the workshops I've done on this, when I've actually gone and looked at people's profiles in the companies I work with, what I see, you know, people who viewed this profile also viewed this one, and you know what I see? They're competitors, not people in their own company. It's like, oh my God, why in the world would you ever not want to be connected with your own people so that they can see multiple people in your organization? That's just a no-brainer I'm throwing out there. Okay. Um, a couple other things on network growth and depth. Uh, top sellers were twice as likely to be introduced via connections than everybody else. So again, top sellers are thinking strategically about who they're connecting with and when they are looking to connect with somebody else, they have this prospect over here and they wanna get over here rather than just picking up the phone and doing that dialing for dollars stuff that isn't working anymore, they're looking at their connection base and they're saying, what is the best way for me to get to this person here? Who am I connected with that, that could get me there? And so literally they are connected to twice as many people. They're using connections to get access to customers, which sort, short circuits the entire sales process because it gets you in the door so much faster and so much easier. And then in terms of referrals, top sellers were 39% um, were getting referrals from their customers and only 10% of the others. And so they were leveraging the referrals to get business as well. A lot of difference. But again, they're thinking strategically. How can I make this easier? Easier. Isn't that interesting? How can I make it easier to connect with other people so I don't have to go through the traditional channels and fight the delete button, whether it's the email delete button or the, the voicemail delete button. They are saying, what is the easiest way to get in? It's through referrals, it's through connections, and I'm gonna leverage those, because that short circuits my sales process and gets me in the door much faster. Couple other thoughts. Professional presence was one thing that was really fascinating to me as well. My prof you, some people call it personal brand. You know, what's your personal brand? I call it professional presence because I find that a lot of people think, prof <laughs> a lot of people tell it, say, I hate personal branding. I don't know why, but I, it's, what I'm, it's, it's about how you stand out there in the marketplace. The one thing that I asked um, was, how would you rate your profile? Now this survey was done by a marketing person, Ardeth Albi and me. We worked on this together and we looked at profiles and we asked people, how would you rate your profile? What was fascinating is top sellers, 54%, well, whoops, I'm on the wrong stat. 41% of top sellers rated their profile as well done. Only 41% of top sellers. That means probably half of you would rate your profile well done. And the other half of you are a little bit lacking. You know there's some things that you could be doing to enhance your profile. Compare that to, by the way, other people, and only 15% rated their profiles as well done. And I would challenge back, although I didn't ask this question, but if you don't know what a good profile is, because you've never seen one, even th those, that, that vast majority of people who didn't rate their profile as good, even the ones who rated it good probably was like mediocre as best because they didn't know what good was. But here's the deal. Top sellers were very cognizant that this was their window to the world. Their LinkedIn presence, they, are, they don't exist on their company's website. When you go to, I mean, how many of you exist on your company's website as a you know, must meet person? You're a hidden gem. You're a wonderful, invaluable resource to your company, but you don't exist except on LinkedIn. 
And that's what top sellers were very cognizant of. My professional presence is on LinkedIn. I need to showcase my expertise on LinkedIn. I need to show that I'm a smart cookie who brings value to people I work with. And that's the real mentality that was in there, that this is my window to the world. And in terms of showcasing expertise, again, top sellers were twice as likely to showcase their expertise on LinkedIn and to share relevant data and content with their customers. 82% were sharing relevant content, 58% of others. So they're using their profile to continually bring good information. And they, by the way, I'm going to say this, although they didn't say it, but I could tell from the, the comments I had. They viewed their profile from their customer's eyes, not from any other perspective. And I would ask each of you to think of it today when you go home and look at your profile. If you were a customer, how would it look? Would you be somebody you'd want to meet with? Because that's what's crucial. Would you be somebody you'd want to meet with? Or are you an aggressive seller who Think about what you write on a resume, aggressive, meeting quota, hard closer. I mean, these things might show up on your resume, but, and you're going to scare customers off. Let me just say, you are going to scare customers off in a nanosecond. So the other interesting thing, and the final thing I just want to point out, and this is just a quick overview of the survey, is group strategy. What I was most blown away with and this is the one that totally, for me, was a, was a real eye-opener, was how top sellers were leveraging the groups. Um, in terms of the quantity of groups that people belong to, top sellers, um, over 50% of top sellers belong to 30 or more groups, compared to only 11% of everybody else. Significant difference. And I said to myself, holy cow, what are they doing in these groups? Because clearly, they think it's important to belong to the groups. And invariably, I had comment after comment about people leveraging the group to bypass the standard connection, you know, connection path. They could connect with customers. They could showcase their expertise and build their professional presence by sharing good information, by answering questions, by helping people out, by driving people to their website with good content that would be helpful, and by opening the conversation. I mean, they were using the groups as a way to do these connections. And that's why they belong to so many groups. Not because they just were group junkies. They were group prospectors. And they were very deliberate about the groups that they joined, literally targeting their prospects and saying, if these are the group, if these are, where my, these are who my prospects are, what groups are they involved with, and how can I get engaged with the groups that my targeted prospects are involved in? So the whole thing was so, so blasted strategic. The top sellers use LinkedIn as a tool, and we really need to realize that's what it is. And, and for you, those of you who are here, you're, you know, you're kind of you know, you're into this, but it's, it's a tool full of strategy. The thing that I discovered as I looked through it you know, overall, the biggest challenge out there is people don't know how to use all the capabilities that LinkedIn has. Um, even in your own companies and even amongst yourself, there are probably many things and capabilities that LinkedIn has that enable you to do more than you thought about it. Our top sellers were just as likely to report that they didn't know enough about LinkedIn as everybody else. I think top sellers were hungrier for more information and knew that there was good meat out there that they just weren't tapping into. The other thing I saw, too, is that there were so many different ways to be successful using LinkedIn. And that, again, was fascinating to me, because what I saw is that people were playing to their natural strengths. Some of them were great connectors and were leveraging their, their network connection ability. Others were just so strategic and business oriented and were using that. But they were all leveraging LinkedIn in a way that played to what they were best at doing. So you know, my message, I guess, simply is that there's a lot to learn and there's a lot that can be done. If any of you, and I know my time is up, but if any of you would like more information, it is on my website, jillconrath.com. You can download the, the, the first one over there, Cracking the LinkedIn Code, is the actual study. And you can go there to jillconrath.com. It's all over. It's Conrath with a K. 
It's all over my website, so you'll see it wherever you go. But the second one, LinkedIn Sales Secrets Revealed, is a, is a tale of seven sellers. And each one of them is leveraging LinkedIn in different ways. And I found it fascinating to share the actual stories of some of these people who are doing really, really well on LinkedIn because it gives all of us more ideas when we see what our colleagues and compatriots out there are doing with this technology that we haven't thought of yet.